How is it going, fellow scavs? I'm back with a recap of the latest Q&A video put up by Fundog. This came out yesterday, so it's been a little bit over a day now. And if you have an opportunity to check it out, I would say go ahead. Go ahead. It's a 30 minute um, video, so there's a ton of questions. No surprise now because uh, we're two weeks past early access and there's a lot more players uh, trying out the game and uh, proportionally we have a lot more feedback going to Fundog Studios. So um, yeah, 30 minutes, uh, lots of questions. I think there's like close to 20 questions. What I will do is I will uh, distill all the questions down to, I've, to what I feel like are the five major themes for the questions that were uh, addressed in this uh, Q&A session. So uh, I'll go through those five major areas right now. So we have a framework. Uh, we're, they're going to talk about the roadmap. We got a lot of roadmap related questions. So I'll, I collected basically all the different points that they uh, mentioned throughout the uh, 30 minute video. The next thing is uh, questions related to stealth and expanding the stealth mechanics in the game. Okay, so the third thing after that is uh, balancing the different play styles that are apparent in the game right now. Uh, for example, being that guy versus being a, a stealthy person who's afraid to uh, get killed by enemies. Uh, the fourth main uh, question area, uh, plans for improving the AI. And finally, we have uh, questions related to everyone's favorite topic, the water system. All right, we'll save that one for last. So uh, let's begin with uh, questions related to the Forever Winter Roadmap. So Miles and uh, Jeff rattled off a bunch of different things. Uh, for these questions. Uh, the first thing that they want to uh, highlight was that they're focusing on finishing maps. So uh, the, the locked maps that you see on the uh, region map right now, those appear to be priorities for the team. They also made reference to maps from the Declaration of War video. So I suppose whatever you see in that trailer uh, from that Declaration of War video, those are the maps that are going to be focused on. Um, there's a question about like expanding the detail of the maps themselves, like such as like adding dungeons or more detailed interior spaces. And they have it in mind that somewhere in the roadmap, but it's like way further out. Um, in terms of other new features, they also mention new weapons and new weapon attachments, uh, including more uh, marksman weapons. Um, enemies uh, they mentioned mini bosses new mini bosses and uh, pushing the AI of these uh, boss characters to have more unique behaviors they mentioned uh, adding more sync kills I wasn't sure what they meant by sync kills but these are I guess the custom kill animations that uh, that you see maybe see in videos of the uh, mother courage grabbing a player and ripping their limbs off or biting their head off things like that um, they're going to make these uh, new sync kills more vicious, they stressed. Then we also have new quests. And I think uh, in another question, uh, we'll, we'll kind of talk more about what they mentioned about the new quests that they have planned. And uh, generally they mentioned November as the next big target for rolling out more of these updates. So that's not far away. We're already approaching mid-October. Um, and then in terms of just the roadmap specifically, they did mention that they have one, it's internal, they're not sharing it out yet, and they're, they're still being adjusted. So a little uh, disappointing in that regard in that it's good to see a visual roadmap and have that front and center, especially on their Steam page or on their official website, but they're keeping it on the wraps for now. And uh, that that's fine, I guess. That's fine. At least they're telling us stuff is coming uh, pretty soon, as early as next month. Okay, so the next major questions about uh, improving the stealth in the game and uh, uh, adding more sort of like non-killing approaches to gameplay. Uh, 
do they have those things planned and how are they going to implement them? So uh, this uh, pretty emphatic yes from uh, Miles and Jeff. They are going to be expanding the stealthing options and stealth mechanics. Um, let's see here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Look at my notes. Sorry, I'm getting stuck here. So in relation to adding more stealth mechanics, they also mentioned with the AI, they're going to make sure the AI is improved as the stealth mechanics are added so that we see the AI reacting intelligently to the player's actions, which I, I thought was like a pretty obvious thing. For example, if they add the ability to go prone, uh, you want that you, you want the AI to react to that appropriately. If the if going prone is the same as crouching, the AI treats it the same, then what's the point of being able to go prone? So yeah, that's what things seem kind of obvious, but they did stress that they want to, as they add more stealth stuff, they're going to make sure the AI is going to be reacting to those stealth, expanded stealth options. Uh, otherwise, they're staying pretty mum on details. Um, going back to the quests, uh, they did mention with the new quests, um, they, these will encourage uh, less killing. And they brought up an example of delivering supplies to frontline troops. So there's going to be more variety with the quests instead of just like hunting down specific enemies. And uh, via new equipment, they're going to try to expand stealth options. So they did admit that that's going to be one of the harder things for them to do uh, and to implement. Uh, they kind of capped off the stealth conversation with like, quote, you know, all our verbs won't be bullets. That's what Jeff said. So that is reassuring. As someone who plays more stealthily and who hasn't really gotten the power level up to really go like crazy gun ho with uh, crazy weaponry, I, I do appreciate that the stealth options are going to be fleshed out because I do feel like there could be more there, more meat on the bones. Okay, so sorry for kind of dragging that one out a bit. The next major question, uh, how will you balance being that guy versus uh, being stealthy and non-violent? More, more uh, passive or less, you know, uh, how do you say it, peace loving <laughs> uh, as a scavenger. So uh, they're, they're not interested in nerfing weapons or player abilities. They're quite clear about that. Uh, they were also very clear about uh, not inflating uh, hit points for either side, whether it's the player or the enemies. Uh, rather, they want to make the enemies nastier uh, or meaner. Uh, they talk about things like adding more missile-based attacks and generally just more vicious attacks from the enemies and more vicious sink kills. So they did say that I found this kind of odd. They said they want to stay true to the fantasy. But to me, I, w I wanted to clarify which fantasy is that exactly? Is it the fantasy of being Rambo? Is it the fantasy of being um, a Splinter Cell? Sam Fisher, right? Uh, Miles mentioned that he's fine with having these well-armed kill teams rolling into a map and laying waste everything. Uh, since he feels that that fantasy is well-earned in the game, uh, he did say that the vast majority of players still acknowledge that the game is very difficult. It's very hard. So if you get to the point where you can be the king of the king of the mountain and just destroy everything, that's still he, they still want that to be a viable path, and they want to reward players that way. Um, finally, I'm just checking my notes real quick here. Um, I want to tie this into another question that is somewhat related. It's about character progression. So they do want to expand interactions with enemies and allow more options to specialize each of the scavengers' abilities. And they didn't dig into that much more detail beyond that. Um, and then they close by saying they want to expand the world versus contract it, which I took to mean that they did want to expand the uh, possibility space of their game rather than sort of like keep it too confined. So at the end of the day, it's just it does seem like that they want to still support the that guy play style as well as uh nurturing and expanding the stealth based approach so i think both camps should feel fairly happy with that answer uh moving on to the fourth main uh, question area uh, which is uh, which involves improving the ai uh, this is a big one right 
So Jeff said at its core, the AI, the AI is designed to react to player aggression. Um, so a lot of the player requests are also on the team's radar. And they also want more realistic and dynamic AI behaviors like we do. And Miles, who is the CEO, CEO of Fundog, he, he does want more sophisticated behaviors uh, such as seeing uh, enemies use more cover and to do flanking maneuvers. He did temper this, right, by saying that uh, they have to keep in mind the load balancing on the performance side. So they have to balance adding these more sophisticated AI routines uh, against, you know, releasing a, a performant game. They want to. They don't want to get into a situation where they have the most advanced AI, but the uh, the game would only be uh, run by the uh, most top of the line gaming PCs. So there's a cost to everything. Surprise, surprise. Uh, he did reiterate again that they don't want to inflate stats and they don't want to create tanks or bullet sponges. They don't want to go that route when trying to create a challenge for the player. Uh, so they're going to focus more on uh, what they call macro improvements. First, uh, to get the most bang for the buck. I took that as meaning they want to make more sort of broad, generic improvements that all enemy types can um, benefit from and that, that would fit the most use cases in the game. So instead of going like super specific on like, oh, these enemies will do this thing based on this player uh, action, they just want to go broad. And they, they did mention something called LOS on target, which I took to mean line of sight. So improving the line of sight uh, detection for enemies, perhaps. And uh, something to tie into the AI question was the uh, enemy spawn logic. In short, yes, they will be fixing the enemy spawn logic. And they understand that this has been an impact on uh, the play experiences. And basically making negative play experiences for most players who have encountered like random enemies spawning on top of them, right? Uh, it's something they'll keep iterating on and to close it out. I want to just point out that there's a question about hunter killers. Um, for now, they say that hunter killers are working as intended. They are meant to respond to uh, extended aggression by the player or aggressive looting. And it's something that they're going to keep tuning. And uh, Jeff said, as of a hotfix three, the hunter killers should feel different. Although he didn't really expand upon how different they should feel, like better. More, more this or that, it's kind of vague on that point. Finally, or should be the final point here, is a question about the water system. What's the ETA for the water system update? So they did say that they're going to have uh, an announcement sometime next week. They'll have more info for us very soon. Uh, it's been the biggest feature set that the team's been discussing lately. And uh, they definitely want to expand the utility of having water and seeking out water. So more uses for water and more ways to work it into the greater game economy. Uh, other than that, they're pretty vague again. And uh, we're just gonna have to wait until next week for more news on that front. But I have faith that they're gonna make some smart changes to the current uh, water supply, water death system. Let's keep our fingers crossed for that. Uh, that's it. I did want to throw out a bonus uh, call out. And uh, the first question uh, to kick off the Q&A was a question from the community to ask just how the devs were doing, how, how they were holding up. And I really want to uh, recognize uh, whoever asked this question um, and uh, thank them because um, it's, it's easy to forget that there's uh, real live human beings behind our favorite games. Uh, Game development is not easy. It's it's a it's a tough road to walk, and especially when you're working in a small team in a in a scrappy startup uh, like Fundog Studios. They're working on their baby. Um, it's 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 not easy, and uh, to recognize that there is real people behind your your games, I think it, it's worth taking the time to appreciate the uh, effort that the, everyone puts into this product, and. Um, yeah, sometimes they get lost. I know that um, with the AAA studios and publishers, I know that uh, people who work 
on that side of the fence. Sometimes they try to connect with players, but they don't really get the same sort of um, relationship. And it's because I think there's more of that wall. And uh, we have AAA developers maybe coming out to try and uh, educate players about the, the rigors of game design and game development, and they don't get the same sort of sympathy. And I find that I've been disappointed in the past, but sometimes it's just the messaging that gets muddled. But uh, in this case, I, I really appreciate the player asking this, uh, just to see how the devs are doing and make sure they're not overworking themselves, because that is a very real risk. But anyway, that's my sort of muddled uh, <laughs> closing to my uh, Q&A recap for you guys. I hope it didn't clock in for too long. I wanted to just save you guys time in case you didn't want to watch the whole 30 minutes of the full Q&A session, but I will include a link to that video in the in the description below uh, in case you do want to check it out. But that is really it for me. Until the next Q&A session or the next Forever Winter video, I will see you guys then. And if you liked what you saw, please do all the great YouTube things. Like this video, consider subscribing to my channel, and do leave a comment because I love reading and responding to all of your comments. It's been great. So yeah, until the next video, I will see you all next time. Ciao.